China is expected to play a big role in potential meetings North Korea has with South Korea and the United States. Representatives from the North and South plan to meet tomorrow to discuss their upcoming summit. South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un will attend the first bilateral meeting between the two nations in more than a decade on April 27th. The White House is also moving forward with plans for President Trump to meet Kim Jong-un. A time and place have not been announced. The New Yorker's Evan Osnos covered, covers North Korea and traveled there last summer. Good morning. Thanks. Let's start. Can we start with China for a minute? Yeah. We're in the middle of, despite what the president says, this back and forth with China. At the State Department, they were saying, we need China. The president used to say, we need China in these negotiations with North Korea. So how can the U.S. be both in a fight with them over trade and also needing them, or do they not need them in these negotiations? Well, it's very complicated. And traditionally, this is why diplomats try to keep these things in separate buckets, because you say you don't want the success or failure of one issue to impact the other. At the moment, what they're trying to do is say, look, let's make sure that China knows that we're ultimately trying to seek a negotiation on trade, but let's not complicate the biggest national security issue we have. What is your assessment? of North Korea and their posture. Are they engaged in these talks in some kind of good faith way, or is there another play here? Well, their heads are spinning as much as they are here in Washington and in New York. Look, the North Koreans spent years, decades, being trained to believe the United States was their enemy. When I was in North Korea last summer, what I discovered was that people were hearing propaganda every day, on the street, on billboards, in schools. Kids are asking me why it is that the Americans are trying to stop them from developing a weapon. And now they're turning on a dime. I, I think this is sincere. What's quite clear when you talk to people inside North Korea, when you talk to people outside, is that they recognized they were on an unsustainable path towards confrontation with the United States. So the question is, how can you diffuse that and come up with a more sustainable arrangement? You write, too, about their impression about Donald Trump. There are people there whose job is to, stutter, is to study his Twitter feed. What are they trying, what are they looking for? What are they thinking about that? Well, they literally watch every syllable that he says. And what I discovered when I was there is sort of a surprise, which is we thought, well, maybe they've decided Donald Trump's their enemy. Actually, they hadn't. They had allowed themselves the possibility that this man, this author of The Art of the Deal, and they had read the book. Because Dennis Rodman brought the book. He brought the book to yes. us. <laughs> yes. And they thought this might be the man who's going to sit down with us at the negotiating table. And they were waiting for the moment when the conditions were right. And when they were, they, they offered it. But this one man said to you that we're trying to figure out, is he either too irrational or too smart? They were genuinely unsure. They couldn't decide if he was playing some complicated game, insulting Kim Jong-un. What they decided in the end was, this is a guy who deals in extravagant, flamboyant strokes. He, they knew he was going to say things that were over the top, because those were the opening rounds of a negotiation, even before they sat down to the table. And at the same time as we're anticipating this meeting, of course, all eyes are going to be on Iran as well, because they have the recertification deadline coming up as well. Many are expecting President Trump to pull out of the Iran deal. How closely will Kim Jong-un be watching what happens in Iran, and what implications, if any, will it have on their negotiations? It does. It casts a shadow over the possibility for reaching some sort of deal with North Korea. North Korea is trying to decide how much does Donald Trump stand by not only the, the words of his predecessors, but also the deals that he makes while in office. And if we pull out of Iran, that makes it harder. You also, you also say that between the two of them, Evan, I think this is interesting, they've got eight years of experience in these very key roles. So, and both of them want to prove to the other you know, I'm bigger than you. Does it matter? It must matter where this meeting is going to be held. Absolutely. The choreography of this, the stage setting, is tremendously important. Could they have it in the United States? Could they have it in Pyongyang? Most likely, if you had to put a bet down today, it will be someplace on neutral territory. Could be in Europe or could be at the DMZ between South Korea. What does Pyongyang need if they're going to be asked to give up their nuclear program, which is a big ask? The biggest thing they want is some sort of reassurance of their own survival, meaning that they don't want to be on a path towards confrontation with the world's most formidable military. There's a lot of steps that they could look to, but that's the key, and that's the key thing. But so, they also say if they go to war, they're ready. Absolutely. They've spent years preparing for it. They take this very seriously. Mm -hmm. So does the rest of the world. <laughs> absolutely. Evan Osnos, always good to have you at the table. Something tells me you'll be back. Thanks, Thanks a lot.